sing for joy when my heart is heavy oh my days oh yes i will Stop your name, Lord. Sing that verse again. I count on one thing. The same God will not fail me. You won't. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things. Yes, He's working. Working on me. Oh, sing yes. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yeah. yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. choose to bless your name even in the valley even in uncertainty Lord we choose to praise I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names that nothing that nothing can stand against I choose to pray to glorify glorify the name of all names and nothing can stand against I choose to praise come on to glorify glorify the name of all names that nothing nothing can stand against Choose to pray to glorify Lord, the name of all names, and nothing can stand again. Oh yes, I'll lift you high in the Come on, sing it out today. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy. When my heart is heavy, oh my days, oh yes, let's sing that chorus again together, yes I will, oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley, yes I will bless your name. Church, let's pray together. Lord, we praise you. The king of our hearts, the king of our lives. You made a way. You said it was finished. And may the truth of your character, may the truth about what you've done transform our minds and completely engulf our hearts with your love, your mercy, and your grace. We love you, Lord. We praise you today in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed 
earned its victory The King of Love The King of Love had given up his life Oh, oh, oh. the darkest day in history The truth of the cross, let's see There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished This is it But not the end we could have known yet For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As a heaven's roar Let's lift him up, come on. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, oh hail the Savior of the world. a moment when the sky lit up, a flash of light breaking through, when all was lost he crossed eternity, the king of life was on the move, for in the dark, for in the dark, for Earth. 
all hail King Jesus all hail the Savior of the world ministry launch where we had some good food and fun and fellowship after the service last week. So it was great to see so many of you and see so many faces. Well, if you're new to the bridge here, we would love uh, to get to know who you are. Uh, You'll notice very quickly here at the bridge that we are intentional about relationship, about community, and about connecting with one another because we believe that life is so much better together. And so if you're new, we would love to know that you're here. Our Connections team is in the atrium at the Connection Center, and you can head out directly after service and connect with them. And if you're new and joining us online, there should be a link in the chat there that our Connections team will put in. Just click on that, fill out the form, and we'll be sure to connect with you. Well, as you know, we launched all of our ministries uh, last week, and that was our ministry launch Sunday. And so youth started on Friday, young adults is beginning tonight, and we've launched Group for Growth. This is a season where we encourage you to connect into a group. As I said, we're really intentional about relationship and doing life together. So there's three different ways that you can connect because we just want to journey with you at whatever point of the journey that you're on. So if you're new to the faith, alpha groups are a great place to start. If you're going through a situation right now in life where you just need some support, our seasonal groups are a great place to start. And then we have our long-term weekly groups that meet together, our life groups. So if you're not sure about which one to connect to or or what might be best for you, you can go to bridgeconnect.ca. And there's actually an assessment there. When you click on the Group for Growth uh, link there, you'll see an assessment that will ask you a few short questions to find out where you're at and what might be the best group for you. So if you go ahead and do that, it might suggest Alpha or Life Groups. But in any way, head to bridgeconnect.ca, find out more information, and be sure to get connected to a group this season. Well, something else that we're in is our our season of board nominations and our AGMs in in November. And so part of that is preparing for um, who would sit on the board in this next season. And so we are uh, directed by board of directors here at the bridge. And so it's a big part of how we operate and who we are. And so those of us who are members have an opportunity to nominate people for the board. And so we always want to make sure that the right person is in the right place at the right time. And so this is our opportunity that if you're a member here at the bridge, that you can nominate those who uh, you think might be a good fit to be on the board in this season. So there's a, three open spots right now, but again, all the information's at Bridge Connect. However, next Sunday is the last opportunity to nominate someone. So if you're going to do that, make sure to do it this week. There is, it does give you sort of a background as to who can be nominated. And so just make sure to check that out before you do the nominations. It's bridgeconnect.ca. Well, I'm going to draw your attention to the screen here. We're going to have a video before Pastor Ryan comes up to share with us today. So check out this video on our Alpha Marriage Groups. Hi, my name is Rob, and this is Judith. Hi. We uh, attended the marriage course uh, last year in September, um, and uh, we're here to tell you about how we found it. We've been married for... 24 years. 
and have two children. Yeah, so we attended the marriage course and the reason why we attended, why we decided was, um, for me, I really just felt that we were in a place we were not growing, we, we weren't sure how to move forward, especially being in a different season. Our children are just finishing university and are in university. Uh, so it was, and being at home together during COVID, we spent a lot of time together. And we realized that we need, needed to get to know one another again. And it was a little tricky. So we needed a little bit of help. I was basically told to come. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, when, when giving it some more thought, um, certainly going through, you know, we certainly were in a different phase in our marriage. Um, you know, the first, you know, we've been married 24 years now. You know, a big part of the first 20 years was really looking after our children. Um, and now that they have sort of left the nest and have gone to university and, and doing other things, we our time was less focused on them. and. Uh, now we had to sort of focus on each other, but um, you know we we found we had to get to know each other again, and so I you know I, I, I agreed with Judith that this would be a, a good course to do to help us learn how to get to know each other again. Life group leaders, those two. For the last nine years, we've been journeying together and they've been exercising their leadership gifts in life group and uh, I've enjoyed the journey with them. I love how um, they acknowledge that even while married for past two decades, they sometimes you just get to a place where, where you need a renewal, where you need some fresh perspective, where you need to get out of a rut and I'm just so grateful that, that here at The Bridge, we offer a ministry that, that helps you do that, to acknowledge it, first of all, in humility, and then to grow in the midst of just showing up for a marriage course. I love that. And so, yeah, if that's your situation and you'd like to be a part of that, make sure that you go to bridgeconnect.ca and, uh, and sign up for that. Be a part of that journey. Um, so we're about something really, really important here. Uh, this is no small thing that we're doing. We are fulfilling the command of God to glorify Him and to enjoy Him. And we're doing that through worship, discipleship, fellowship, ministry, and mission. And those are the five purposes that we give ourselves to here at the bridge. So we could say we exist for worship, or we could say, we at the bridge exist for discipleship, or we could say, we here at the bridge, we exist for fellowship or ministry or mission. And so those are the five things that we're actually focusing on in the month of September into the first week of October. And then of course we have our, our October Thanksgiving here in Canada, and we're going to be celebrating with thankfulness to God on that weekend in October. So that's our journey right now. That's what we're doing uh, in the teaching portions of, of our time together. And uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about fellowship today. Last week, um, our Pastor Emily shared with you about discipleship. That was supposed to be this week. I was supposed to be up last week talking about fellowship. I got ill, so we switched it up. And thank God I'm healthy and back at it. And uh, I appreciate so much Emily's willingness to just step in there with her message and share that with you last week. And I want to congratulate all the ministries that are launching. By the way, I wasn't here last week. First time in 25 years that I've missed a ministry launch here at the bridge. And so youth, young adults, children's ministries, all of the, the, uh, the, the new groups that are starting and the seasonal groups that are starting, congrats. Glad you guys are all launched and starting, and you're getting to see new people, new faces, and uh, you're, you're, you're in a new place in your journey with God. So I want to congratulate you, and I, I just appreciate our pastoral staff. We've been working on the launch. We've been working on these ministries for over half a year. We start with our ministry plans a long time ago. We budget, we do this, we do that, and so it's all launched now, and we're hard at it now uh, through this particular ministry year. 
I'm Brian Childs. I'm the lead pastor here at The Bridge. I'm, I'm told that it's good for me to introduce myself every once in a while for those who are new. And so that's who I am, and that's what I do here. I lead, and, uh, and I'm a privileged guy to be able to do that. Let's pray together as we make our way into, into God's Word. Father, thank you for this time that we have and for this opportunity to just continue to learn and continue to grow and continue to be set free and to continue to enter into the liberty that is ours in Jesus Christ our Lord. This human experience is sometimes broken, and so we bring our brokenness before you. This human experience is sometimes stained by sin, and we bring, we bring our sinfulness before you, and we just ask you, God, to grow us. Just God, cause us to become that much more functional, that much more loving. Oh, God, just that much more of a human being as you meant for us to be as a result even of this message. Only the Holy Spirit can work this into the very core of our person. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask you now to minister to us as we hear the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians is an amazing book of the Bible written by the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to take you to chapter 5, verses 15 to 17. And we can read it uh, together. You can see it on the screen behind me. And here's what it says. Be careful how you live. So one of our values here at the bridge is intentionality. It's one of our five eyes. We're very intentional about what it is we do, how we do it, um, and and who it is that that gets to steward over it. So we're very, very intentional. Here Paul's saying, be careful how you live. Not as fools, but as those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity for doing good. In these evil days, don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Recently, I read about Adelina Dominguez, who had died in San Diego. And now what made her death noteworthy is that according to the Guinness Book of World Records, she was the oldest living American at the time. She was 114 years of age, and she had outlived her children and some of her grandchildren. Imagine. When she was asked the secret of her longevity, the Associated Press that was doing the interview reports that she gave all the credit to God and to his plan and purpose for her life. And I'm quoting her. She said, I knew that God had a purpose for my life for however long he would have me to live. God has a purpose for my life for however long he has me to live. Some of the purpose is revealed to us in a text Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. I don't have it on the screen behind me, but I'm going to read it. Just follow along with me because this is the portrait of God's will for some recently converted people to Jesus. Some people, some 3,000, they say somewhere around 3,000 men and over probably another six to seven to 8,000 women and children were, were, were in the audience when Peter, one of his disciples, started talking about Jesus and the story of Jesus. And these people miraculously gave themselves over to the narrative and to the story of God as expressed through Jesus. And here's how they began to live. This is how, very intentional, very purposeful, listen how they began to live. This is what it says. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with many, with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles were occurring amongst them. All the believers were together and they had everything in common. They sold their property and their possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together and they were glad and they, with their sincere hearts. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of all people and the Lord 
added to their number daily those who were being saved. So that's a portrait of what church looked like in its fledgling stage. You see in their worship, discipleship, fellowship, ministry, and mission. You see all five of those things in that text. And in this series, The Bridge on Purpose, we've learned that we exist as a church to worship. That was our first week. And we learned that worship is recognizing, appreciating, and responding to God's love through offering our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's worship. That's a definition of worship. Recognizing, appreciating, and responding to God's love through our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I shared the message around those things a couple of weeks ago. And last week, Emily brought to you the second purpose of God for the bridge, and that is discipleship. And a disciple, a disciple in the New Testament is simply a Christian, and a Christian means a Christ one. It's someone who has identified Jesus as the Savior of the world, and they've identified him as the very, very uh, image of God and how God wants us to live. So that's a disciple. Everybody that was, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 11 says, and in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians or Christ ones. Everybody that was converted to Jesus was a disciple. So we tend to think of discipleship as a second stage choice in the Christian journey. It's one thing to be a Christian. It's another thing to be a disciple. That, that doesn't exist in God's word they are synonymous. If you talk about someone being a Christian, you're talking about them as being a disciple. If you talk about them as being a disciple of Jesus, you're talking about them as being a Christian. You cannot separate the two. So discipleship is not an option. It is absolutely paramount for you to be faithful to the Christ that you follow. A Christian church exists with the belief that people need to become familiar with Jesus. And then eventually they need to become followers of Jesus. And a disciple is a follower of Jesus and is someone who embraces him as the ultimate authority in their lives and the one who saves them from the world's lies. That's what we believe about Jesus. He saves us from the world's lies. And he, and, and he is someone... Or, or a Christian is someone who has Jesus as there is, he is the one and only treasure worth hanging on to in this world and the next. That's what a Christian is. They have Jesus as the one and only treasure in this world and in the next. They know that he is the treasure. He is the very thing that we ought to be anchoring our hearts in, loving him with all our soul, with all our strength, with all of our minds. So every Christian should be seeking to get help for themselves from others on growing more and more like Christ. And that's called discipleship as well. And every church should think through how all these kinds of biblical discipleship-making expressions can live themselves out in our corporate life. And so we are purposely building opportunities for you to grow towards treasuring Jesus as the most important thing and the most defining factor in your life. So this week, we're going to learn that we exist to fellowship with each other. Notice this verse at the top of your outline or on the page behind me on the screen. Hebrews 2.10, it says, God is the one who made all things and all things are for his glory. He wanted to have many children share his glory. God wanted a family. That's why we're here. God is a spirit and he wanted a spiritual offspring and that is called the church. And the Bible says he planned everything in the entire universe so that he could be born 
We could be born so that, so that we could share in his glory, so that we could be a part of his family. Now look at the next verse. It says his unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself. How? Through Jesus Christ. That's been God's plan to bring us into his family, to become a part of his brood through our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The entire Bible, the entire book, the entire story of God is about him building a family. And that's what it's all about. It's why we have history, because God is building a family for himself that is going to last not just here on this earth, but rather forever and ever. 1 Peter 2.17 says, love your spiritual family. So here's the deal. Your, your relationship with Jesus and the love that you have for Jesus has to translate into a personal relationship with his spiritual family. You can't separate the two. It has to translate. You're going to spend more time with your spiritual family than you are even with your birth family. Your spiritual family is forever. It's forever. Matthew 22, 37 to 40 is the great commandment. What does it say? It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And then it goes on to say, and the second is like it, love your neighbor like yourself. All the law of the prophets hang on these two commandments. So we're called to love God, but we're also equally called to love others. So we are forever beings. That's what we are. We're eternal. We're eternal beings. And when we enter into a personal relationship with God, we become spiritually alive to our eternality, to the values of heaven. And one of the things you're going to do in heaven in eternity is you're going to love God. And the other thing that you're going to do in heaven is you're going to love all the other residents there. It's going to be a place of love. And so God says, I want you to learn to practice this love on behalf of others here on earth. So fellowship, simply put, is the love that we experience as God's family. That's what fellowship is. First John is especially instructive on this. In the fourth chapter, verse seven, it says this, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. It goes on to say in verse 21, and he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. So a love for God must translate into a love for his church. It must. Your devotion can not only be to God. Your devotion must translate into a love for others. There's a unique relationship that is ours as we follow Christ. We as followers are called to love each other. So now how do we do that? Fortunately, the Bible gives crystal clear instructions. And Paul wrote this, and he said, I'm writing so that you'll know how to live in the family of God, and that family, he says, is the church. The church is a family. It is not essentially a building. It's not an institution. It's not an administration. It's not an organization. It's not a club. It's a family. And I love the fact that, and I've emphasized this over the last 25 years, it doesn't say that we are to act like a family. It says that we are a family. We are a family. And as such, the frame of reference in terms of how we are to relate to each other is out of the context of us being family. So young men, you are to treat other young women not as objectified beings, but rather as sisters in the Lord. And young women, you are to treat men not as objectified beings, but rather as brothers in the Lord. We are to treat our elderly as fathers and mothers in the Lord. We are to treat our young people 
as children and youth in the Lord. This is what it means as a church to be the family of God. So what I want to do is just take you through quickly four characteristics of what the church family is to look like, what fellowship is to look like. So the first characteristic of fellowship is membership. Now that's kind of a technical word and I, I kind of don't like the word membership because usually you have to pay something in order to be a member and there's some sort of cost. Well, what's true is in church, that's not much different, but let me just share with, with you what the Bible refers to when it talks about membership. You must choose to belong. You must choose to belong to Christ's church. You must make that choice. That's the most basic understanding of fellowship. It means that you find a church family, you choose, and you choose to get connected to it. Look at what the Bible has to say in Ephesians 2.19. It says, you are members. That's where the word membership comes from. You are members of God's very own family, and you belong in God's household with every other Christian. You belong. The Christian life is not just a matter of believing, it's also a matter of belonging. And you and I must choose to belong. Fellowship begins with belonging and making that choice to be a part of a particular body of believers. You know, you hear some people say, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't want to belong to a church. That just doesn't make sense. The church is where you live out what it means to be a Christian. That's like saying, I'd like to be a football player, but I don't really want to be a part of any particular team. It's like saying, I want to be a tuba player, but I don't want to play in the orchestra. Or it's like saying, I want to be a bee, but I don't want to be a part of a particular hive or a soldier without a platoon. A Christian without a church family is an orphan. And God meant for us to be a part of a family, not disenfranchised, going through life singularly or unattached. In Romans 12, verse 5, it says, In Christ, we who are many form one body, and we are each a member that belongs to the other. Can you feel that? Like, can you, can you sense that with me? We are each members that belong to the other. And this is where Paul says, you know, the hand cannot say to the nose, I have no need of you. The foot cannot say to the knee, I have no need of you. This is what Paul is saying here. This is, this is, uh, this is not optional. We must be members and in order to be a part of the body of Christ and to receive the benefit of that same body. Let me take you to the second characteristic. The second characteristic of fellowship is friendship. And after choosing to belong, the second characteristic goes a little bit deeper, and that is we learn to share our lives. In friendship, we learn to share our lives. You see, you were created in God's image, so, so you were made for relationships. And the Bible says regarding Adam and Eve, when God created Adam, of all the things that he's looking at, he's saying, it's good, it's good, it's good. Sun's good. Yep, light, darkness, good. Firmament, good. Looking at Adam, studying Adam, thinking, oh, you know what? This isn't good. This is not good. Looks at Adam and says, this is not good. Why is it not good? Because God looks at him and says, no, I did not make man to walk alone or go through life alone. God never made mankind to be isolated from each other. He made us to be in community. And truly, it's only good when this is true in our lives. So we need to learn to share. All the believers met together constantly and shared everything. We just read that in Acts chapter 2 a little bit earlier. Notice two things. One, you can't develop friendships without meeting together. And two, you can't develop friendships without sharing. Now, the more important, the more important, or sorry, the more frequent we meet together, the closer we are going to get. Do you know why most people are lonely? They just don't make time for friendships. They're too busy achieving. Or there's some quirk in their character 
that keeps them from moving across boundaries and into personal relationships. And this, this church is built in order to help you contend with your irks and your quirks, with the particularities that are you, that keep you from fully functioning in the love that God means for you to be functioning in. Now, being a part of that, that, that uh, life group that I've been a part of for nine years, you got to know that in nine years, we, we hit some bumps along the way. You got to know that, that, that we, we had to work through some irks and quirks along the way. You got to know that when, when, you know, 12, 14 people come together, it, it's not all roses. There's some, some, some serious, real stuff that gets dealt with. And, and, and I think that that's what life is meant to be. God puts us in these positions where we grow and we develop and we find out what real and authentic love is. So true godly fellowship happens because you choose to make time for it. And the Bible says they shared everything. They shared their experiences. I love how in my life group, I could come into my life group, I could plop down on a couch, and I could say, Man, it's been a week. It's been a week. And, and there were people there to say, what kind of week was it, Brian? And they allowed me to share vulnerably, even as a pastor, to say, wow, it's been a, a crazy, crazy week. God means for us to be in environments where we can share we can share these things. We share our experiences. Iron sharpens iron. And the truth of the matter is, is sometimes our experiences are positive and we can share positive experiences. Other times they're less than positive and they're hurtful and life can be hard and we need to be there for each other. Second, the Bible says that we're to share our homes. We're literally to open up our homes to each other. Doesn't matter what kind of home you have, by the way. Doesn't matter if you can, if you can fit more than yourself into your home. God means for you to share your home, to have people over, to break bread, to pray together, and to grow in Christ together. God means for you to do that. We're called to share our homes with each other. And then we're to share our problems. We're to share our difficulties. We're to weep with those who weep. We're to rejoice with those who rejoice. We're to dance with those who dance. Empathy should be just a common characteristic inside of a life group. Empathy should just be profusive. Hebrews 10, 25 says, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another. The number one trait of a healthy life group is that it's a place that encourages those who come. Now, the third characteristic of fellowship is partnership. Here's what I want to say to you about partnership. Partnership, it comes from this Greek word called koinonia. And koinonia is actually where you get the word fellowship from. And koinonia has two, two tentacles, if I might say. And the idea behind this koinonia or this fellowship is that we're to experience full participation in Jesus and then we're to experience full or partnership in Jesus. So we're to have the blessing of full participation and we're to have the responsibility of full partnership. So as we grow in Christ, it's not just we're receptacles of the grace of God by his spirit, but we are also those who pour out into others through sharing our resources. And the partnership is you and I realizing that we have this accountability before Jesus to show up, not just to participate and receive, but to show up to share, and to give. And I'll talk to you more next week about what that means in terms of ministry. Fourth characteristic, my final characteristic of fellowship that I'm sharing with you here today, and that's kinship. This is the deepest characteristic of fellowship in the family of God. It's called kinship, and kinship is an old term, and you've heard it referred to as those who are kinfolk or kin. We're not really talking about that right here, right now, but kinship literally means your closest relationships. It means your closest family. When somebody has an accident, they say notify the next of kin, and they don't mean call Aunt Ethel. 
And if you're here, Aunt Ethel, I mean no offense to that. They mean that you find the person that they care the most about, the person who is closest to them, the one that they hold most dearly, you go get the person that matters most to them and you bring them right here, right now, into the middle of whatever crisis your kin is experiencing. That's the level of fellowship that God calls us to. They devoted themselves to each other, the Bible says. They were like a loving family. Life is not about accomplishments. And I know that's hard living in the GTA and living in this part of the world. We tend to evaluate our lives by way of accomplishments and by way of accoutrements. Accoutrements meaning the kind of car we drive, the kind of house we live in, and all the other toys. Life's not about that. It's about relationships. You're put on this earth to know God, to love him, to love his family to fully participate and partner with his family. Loving God, that's worship. And loving each other, that's fellowship. In John 13, Jesus said, your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I want you to pray with me as Anna Androgyna is going to come and she's going to I'm going to interview her just for a couple of minutes here as the ending of my sermon. Anna is our, our new Life Group's pastor. She's our care pastor. And I want to introduce you to her, but I also want to ask her a few questions on, pointedly, how can we honor this teaching and how can we truly share our lives one with each other? So let's pray first. Father, thank you for the truth of God's word. I pray now, Lord, as Pastor Anna and I talk to each other, I ask God that before the congregation there would be some sensibilities as to how you would have us respond to a message like this. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Anna, come on up if you would. It's a privilege for me to, to have you up here on the, on the platform with me. Thank you, Pastor yeah. Brian. We have been journeying together for a long time, Pastor Anna, probably plus 22, 23 years, I think, now. Yes. 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 And uh, you and I have, and, and Jay, and we've all shared together over and over again over the years about how to love one another here at the bridge. Uh, one of the things that you began probably a decade ago now was uh, you, you took on the care ministries mm -hmm. of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ministry has grown. It's intricate. It's uh, elaborate. It's grown. It's become probably our number one impact in the community, mm -hmm. that care ministry. And we're so grateful that our church is healthy in the way it impacts the community. But here you are now, we've, we've asked you to take on the role of life group ministries, uh, as well as integrating the care ministry into that. Because we have a belief, and that is that the primary way in which we're called to care is in our groupings, mm -hmm. in our life groups. Mm -hmm. That's one of the primary ways that God would have us to do that. So I've asked you to actually just share a little bit with me. Now I've got the question here. Where can one belong? How can we develop friendships? What does partnership look like? Um, let's see, I think that's actually your writings. <laughs> yes, sorry. Practically speaking, how do these dynamic and loving relationships happen here at the bridge? Thank you, Pastor Brian. How do they happen? Yeah. At the bridge, whether you are a child, an infant, or a senior adult, we have a group for you. That's how we live out God's principles, and that's our desire, that no one stands alone, including a child. My kids have been uh, from infant, uh, from grades, senior kindergarten to now young adults, and each one is in a small group. And I see how they grow and they, how they are committing their lives to live out the principles that we are learning and how their love for God is increasing on a day-to-day -day basis. So at the bridge, we desire that no one stands alone. So I pray that if you are not yet in a group, that you would join a group so that we can learn together, grow together, be devoted in life together, uh, and uh, get to know God 
in a loving way because that's his desire for us, that we would get to know him uh, no matter what life circumstances or what life situation that you may be in. Um, it's natural for us that when we are going through a hardship or when we are going through uh, something challenging to pull back and withdraw and be alone. Uh, but remember, no one is an island. Mm -hmm. And so whether you pull back and be alone or whether you are in community, you are impacting the community. So let's have a positive impact in the community by living out um, in an authentic way. And these groups, you are able to share, um, gener live out generously, and we are able to regularly worship and fellowship together and be devoted in prayer, pray for one another, and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Yeah. We have, this, we have this thing here at the bridge where we, we, um, we don't do sort of like isolated studies. We do studies where people journey together. So for instance, mm -hmm. the marriage course that was talked about earlier, mm. it's a journey with others. Yes. It's not an isolated journey. You don't sit yes. at home alone going through something on your computer. Mm -hmm. You do it with people. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of other journeys that people can take in the context of group. Yes. There's life groups, yes. which is a sustainable spiritual experience mm -hmm. that obviously I've benefited from for mm -hmm. nine years mm -hmm. out of my group, but there are other groups. Yes. What, what other kinds of groups do we have here at the bridge? Mm. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. Uh, at the bridge, if you are a young adult or adult, we have various groups, starting with if you're exploring what it is to live out your faith as a Christian, or you're wondering, what is my purpose? Why am I here on earth? Then we have faith exploration group, which is Alpha. And if you are going through a loss, if you're going through a separation, whether it's a temporary separation or a divorce, or you've lost a loved one and you're grieving, or you're going through financial struggles and you don't know how to order your finances, or simply you want to just enrich your life by, as Judith and Rob talked about, your marriage. We have seasonal support groups. So these are short-term groups where you can just enter in for a period of eight to 13 weeks, depending on the group, and journey with others who are going through a similar stage. And these are led by experienced leaders. They themselves have gone through uh, these situations. And I have attended every single one of the seasonal groups that we are offering uh, here at the bridge. And then we have life groups. These are groups where long-term growth it happens where we learn to grow deeper in our faith, learn to grow deeper in our fellowship, learn to grow deeper to get to know God. As Pastor Brian said, as we read in Proverbs, as iron sharpens iron. I've had men and women who spoke into my life very honestly. And it made me think and not want to go, go back to the group, but I did. That's how it is. So um, I would encourage you to take that step of faith if you haven't tried out any one of these groups. And then we have our online prayer gatherings. We are calling them prayer groups now. Uh, and these happen three times a week. So even though you are in any one of these groups, you sometimes may go through a hardship that you want others to pray with you. I'm there almost two or three times a week, and it happens on a Wednesday morning. Many times Pastor Brian is there with us, and Thursdays during lunchtime, 12.30 to 1, we have people join from their office spaces, uh, having lunch and praying with us. And then Sunday mornings, at 8.30 to 9. So these are spaces where you can come and be encouraged in your faith journey so that you don't have to be alone. I love it. I just love it. Now, real quick, real quick. Um, yesterday you had a big event. Mm -hmm. What was that event? What was its purpose? Yes. And how are you feeling about it? 
feeling very energized good, after that. Good. Yes, I, I heard really good many things. of you uh, <coughs> who are leading groups were with us yesterday. We were in this space. Yeah. Um, so about 45 group leaders. So uh, we, for the first time, brought together all our gr- leaders who are leading groups, life group leaders, prayer gathering leads, and our seasonal group leaders and our alpha leaders all came together for a time of vision casting, for a time of prayer, for a time to reflect back and thank God for the two years we've come through and also to look forward, uh, to pray for the vision that God is giving each and every one of us to have in the space that we are going to be leading. And so excited uh, that Pastor Darius was with us and other leaders, uh, and we just uh, are pumped and ready for what God has in store for us here at the bridge. Awesome. That's wonderful. I'm really excited about what's going on uh, as to fellowship within our church, Mm -hmm. and um, we're being very purposeful and intentional about trying to meet the needs that God represents and or presents to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've mentioned just a number of, of expressions of care and, and through groups. Mm-hmm. So, And we, you've also talked about how groups are through all of our ministries. Yes. Children's ministries, youth ministries, young adult ministries, adult ministries. It's mm-hmm. all about... It, the groups are the engine that allows us to fulfill God's word when it comes to this whole idea of fellowship. So please, if you're not in a group, where do they go again? They go to bridgeconnect.ca or just come and see Hazel right outside by the Connections booth. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Anna. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Wait, don't leave. Don't leave. Really want to pray. So why don't you stand as a congregation? We're going to sing a song to to bring this time together to an end. But before we do that, let's pray for Pastor Anna. Uh, Let's pray for life group leaders. Um, Are there any life group leaders here today? Could you raise your hand if you're here today? I want you to come up to the front right now, if you would. Just get up, get up here now, if you would. All the light group leaders, all the, all the people who facilitate groupings. Come on up here. Come on up here. Everybody. All the other group leaders. If you facilitate a group of any sort, I want you to come on up, okay? All right. Yeah, come on up. Prayer group leaders. Life group leaders. Seasonal group leaders, just come on up. All right, we're going to pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we come before you, and we desire to fulfill your will when it comes to koinonia, when it comes to fellowship, when it comes to honoring you and your family. We want to join in the sense that we want to come and fully participate in all that you have for us. All those one anotherness verses that are in the Bible, some 56 of them, where we're called to pray for one another, we're called to love one another, we're called to forgive one another, we're called to serve one another, we're called to uphold each other in prayer. So many things, God, we're called to do. We do it through groups. And so, Lord, I just pray for each leader that stands up here right now that you would anoint them, that you would give them the ability to persevere, that you give them the the ability to persist, that you would give them the ability, Father God, to to just simply be a vessel that carries your spirit. Relieve every leader here from that heavy responsibility of having to have all the answers for every human need. None of us have that. But I pray that you would anoint every leader here with an ability to just be with people to be alongside with them, to inspire them and to encourage them and even resource them. But Father, most importantly, just be with them and to facilitate a meeting or a a group or a, a learning whereby others are journeying together. Father, I pray for Pastor Anna and for her team, both in care ministries and in life groups. I pray for those teams. I pray, God, for those people who are overseeing and shepherding and and taking responsibility for the direction, I pray, God, that you would anoint them. I pray, God, that you would bless them. I pray, God, that you would just give them tremendous energy for what is before them. As we grow and as we flourish as a church, I pray that our life group ministry and its network would just multiply 
and continue to exponentially multiply. Give us leaders, Lord. Give us volunteers. Give us houses. Give us locales. Give us ability to, to meet wherever it is that our people are. Allow us to live out Jesus in those places. So Father, we just pray for our life group ministry, for our seasonal groups, and for all aspects of journeying together, whether it be in team or whether it be in learning. I just pray, God, that you would bless us richly. May we honor you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Thank you. Those who are leading, thank you so much. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for being prayed for. Pastor Darius is going to lead us in worship now. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brian. Well, let's gather together, brother, brothers and sisters in Christ, gathered around the same cross, the same God, the same Savior. Let's worship Him together today. Seated on the throne of mercy, your glory shining bright for all to see. Oh God, I will praise you. Let's sing magnificent. Oh, magnificent with grace unending. You rescue us with love that never fails. Oh God, I will praise you. Let's sing who is like, who is like the Lord, strong in battle. Who is like the Lord, mighty to save. Who is like the Lord, King forever. Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns, oh, oh, Lord, you reign in all the earth, over this church, Lord, let's sing this in faith, I know that you are always with me, sing it to him today, your presence goes before and goes behind. Oh God, I will praise Oh, who is like, who is like the Lord, strong in battle, who is like the Lord, He's mighty, mighty to save, who is like the Lord, King forever. Oh, Jesus, Jesus reigns, Jesus reigns, who is like, who is like the Lord. and thanksgiving and praise as sing you reign in all the earth and all the heavens you reign in all the earth you reign in all the heavens you're holy you're seated on the throne nothing can stand against you you're holy Oh, you reign in all the earth. You reign in all the earth. Sing it out. You reign in all the heavens. You're holy. Seated on your throne. You're seated on the throne. Nothing can stand against you. Lord, who is like the Lord? Strong in battle. Who is like the Lord, mighty to save? Who is like the Lord, King forever? Jesus, oh, He reigns, Jesus reigns. Who is like the Lord, strong in battle? Who is like the Lord, He's mighty, mighty to save? King forever, Jesus, oh, he 
reign You reign in all the earth You reign in all the heavens You're holy You're seated on You're seated on the throne Nothing can stand against you Your heart Let's sing that chorus one more time together You reign You reign in all the earth You reign in all the heavens Your heart Oh, you're seated on your throne You're seated on the throne Nothing can stand against you You're holy Oh, you're holy Let's praise Him today Come on to go there if you would like prayer today there are people that are there and wanting to pray for you and don't forget to have some time together to fellowship with one another in the atrium grab a coffee and just uh, be together today after service well have a wonderful week and we will see you next week